Hi everyone, it's Joanne here from Apple Tree Studio and are you ready for something a little bit different? I thought we'd have a play around with charcoal and watercolour and I know that seems a, an unusual combination doesn't it but I have used it previously and I'd forgotten how exciting it is really uh, and do you know what as well it gives your painting a little bit of texture which we all love but it also gives it that extra punch, those lovely darks that we're sometimes quite fearful of putting into our watercolours. The charcoal kind of does that for you. So we're going to be painting three purrs. Yes, purrs. If you're from the northwest of England like I am, then you say purrs. If you're from somewhere else, or you're a bit posher than I am, you say pears. I cannot say pears, it does not feel natural to me. So we're going to be painting three purrs. So go grab your charcoal and your watercolours and your confidence and let's paint three charcoal and watercolour purrs together. Here are the materials I'm going to be using for this tutorial. I've got a piece of Bockingford watercolour paper, big jug of clean water, my palette, my spray bottle, size 8 brush, three colours. Granacridon Gold, Ultramarine Blue and Cadmium Red and of course you can swap those colours, it's completely up to you what colours you use but I'm going for three primaries uh, and I've got a charcoal pencil, I've treated myself to a brand new one and here I've just got some smaller sticks of charcoal and they are tiny because if you use a big long piece it just snaps all the time uh, and it's a willow charcoal, it's not a compressed hard charcoal, it's that lovely soft crumbly charcoal uh, that is a little messy <laughs> I won't deny, but it's it's much better than the compressed charcoal, so you can just kind of smooth it into the paper a little bit. So, I've got a drawing down here, and I've just drawn three pairs. One, two, three. Pairs, pairs, however you pronounce it, there are three. So, I'm going to start by just giving it an outline first with my uh, charcoal pencil. So, I'll just use that just to draw in the shapes. Don't have to be too perfect. There we go. Nice round shape there for one per. Let's put another one in there. And we go. Two and third. We'll bring that down. that and we'll give that a little stalk as well and while I'm here I'm just going to indicate where I want those shadows to be so I'd like a shadow to come from that one I'd love a shadow to come from that one and I definitely want a shadow to come from this one so I'll just maybe even introduce the stalk shape as well into that so I can put that down now because what I want us to do is to put some charcoal onto the paper where we're going to run washes over the top. So if I choose a little bit of charcoal here and I decide the light's obviously coming from this side because the shadows are going to come across here. And I'm going to take that charcoal and just rub it on its side into that shape. And I can run it along the shadow as well. So I'm connecting the two shapes. I can blend that in with my finger. That's the messy bit. It's just a finger though, it will wash. <laughs> Should we do that again? Let's do it on this side. Let's put, just running it on its side, connecting that shadow shape as well. Giving it a nice blend in. You can see it's a little messy. Let's put in a, a darker shape along here as well. And you can see it, I'm using a, a knot surface, so it, it has got a little bit of tooth to it, the paper. So it's picking up the grain as well, which is nice. Just run that shadow and then connect it to the purr shape. Now, so we've got one value down and I'd like us to go a little bit darker now. So here, I'm going to put in a darker value against that pearl shape here. 
rub it down like so let's put a little bit of a darker value underneath this one as well and definitely put a dark against that shape One more little dark. Let's come in and make our shadow a little bit darker. Just pulling that across into that shape. And we are going to be ready for some paint soon. Maybe a little bit of detail just on the sides of these stalks. You can see mine is anything but perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Got away with that one. There we go. So let's put some washes on. So I've put the paint onto my palette. I'll take my size eight brush. Let's put a bit of color into this now. And let's start with Aquanacridum Gold. And remember, we're painting light as well, so I'd like the light to come from this side. So I'm going to try and leave some of that left-hand side clean. And you can see what happens when you get down to the charcoal bit. It kind of gives you this beautiful texture. I'm going to put a bit of water onto that. Just soften it down a little bit. I'm going to lift a little bit of that away as well, just so I get that lighter feeling. But look at that lovely texture that the charcoal's created. And we've got those darks as well. And that's normally uh, the part that we get fearful of when we're painting with watercolour. Putting in those darks, we've already done it. <laughs> Let's come down. Definitely want to keep a nice highlight on that. So I'll make sure I keep that nice and clean. You can go into the other shape as well, connecting them with that colour. And let's connect that shape with that one. Trying to keep that colour nice and fresh. Look how wonderful they look already. <laughs> and we've only put a bit of charcoal down and a little bit of paint. Let's add a bit of warmth into those pairs. Let's put some nice red into that. Oh, lovely. Make yourself jump when you put that in. Just moving it around a little bit as well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that wash into that shadow area. So I'm just going to use a wet brush just to pull that out. And of course the paint that we've put down, in fact I'm going to put a little bit more red into that. Just want to lift that little bit away there. Look, again I'm just wetting the bottom half of that. And allowing that yellow and red. In fact, I'm going to add more red. <laughs> and just allowing it to run into that shape. I think I'd like a bit more red on that side as well. Maybe some little dots of colour. Again, just wetting that surface area and allowing that yellow just to run into that shadow colour. I'll take a little bit of that yellow as well and just pop some 
into those little stalks. There we go, one, maybe two, maybe three. I know it's not perfect. <laughs> I've got to stop saying that, haven't I? <laughs> okay. I've got mine on with a bulldog clip on the board here, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tip my paper and allow that wash get, just to run back up into those shapes. Remember, you're in control. I'm going to let that dry for a couple of minutes and then I'm going to give a little spritz because I want to give it more texture. If I do it now, it's far, far too wet. So what I tend to do as a rule of thumb is I just wait for the paint just to soak into that paper a little bit as well, just so it's nearly dry before I spray it. And again, you can see it's still moving around. Let's let it run all the way off like that. So... I will come back when it's nice and dry. So you really do need it to be really dry for the next stage. And you can see mine's nice and dry. And you know, it's interesting, isn't it? Because just look, all that lovely texture that the watercolour and charcoal have created. So I'm really liking this at the moment. I'm liking the way the two sit together. Now I think we should jump out of our comfort zone and do something bold. I want to put a really dark value against these shapes here. So the best thing to do here is to turn it upside down. And I'm going to go back in with a bit of willow charcoal. Mm, okay, let's, let's put in some dark values in between here. So I need to be extra careful, obviously. I'm just pressing that charcoal into that shape. As I come up, I think I'll just lessen it. I'll not press as hard. Maybe even just soften it away a little bit like that. Let's come in this shape now and you can fill a bigger surface area just by using it on its side. I'll create a point first. I can always come back in with the pencil just to do a bit of tidying if I need to which I think I do, because it is quite clumsy, isn't it, using a piece of charcoal like this. It's uh, it's not very forgiving. <laughs> Let's have a look. Oh, OK, so maybe a little bit more along this shape here. I'll put it on its side and then I'll just soften it away with my finger. And I think just to balance it, let's have a little bit coming through this side as well. Just want to go right up to that edge there. Uh, yes, OK, we'll put a little bit. just on this side, just to give it that balance. And if there's any bits you've missed, of course, you can go back in with your pencil just to tidy up. It's not too messy, you know, just a little bit on the fingers there. <laughs> right, OK. And, of course, if you've made any mistakes or you want to take anything out, you can use a putty rubber. I've got a bit of a mark there, so I'm going to lose it. But if there's any bits that you don't like with the charcoal and you want to lose it a little bit, just get your putty rubber out and just lift a little bit away. I'm quite happy with mine, so I don't really want to do too much of that. So let's think about background. So we've got three colours here. So... We can use all three. <laughs> Why not? We're experimenting and playing. So I'm going to turn mine this way. I want the flow to kind of go like that. So I'm putting my paper in that direction. Oh, what colour shall we use first? <laughs> I think I'd like a little bit of light in there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the yellow. Let's do that. Let's take some of that yellow. Just pop that in, a bit of water. Well, 
What about some reds? You pop some red in there as well. And I like the way it's creating that lovely texture again underneath. Underneath the paint washes, a bit of yellow. Bit of red in there as well, why not? And I've got that little section here, haven't I? So I'll just take a bit of the yellow. Now, while that's still wet, I'm going to introduce a blue. So I'm going to put the dark blue in there. That's the ultramarine blue I'm using here. And I'm going to pop it right into these corners, right against the light of the pearl shapes. It also allows you to do a little bit of housework, as in a bit of tidying up as well. Maybe a bit more coming out. Throw some water on that as well. Just allowing that paint just to go where it wants to go. Maybe a little bit of the blue there as well, look. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I'm just doing what I think looks nice. I'm going to give this one a little spritz as well. And I'm going to leave it in that position because that's where I want the direction of paint to flow. If I turn it around, it's all going to back run into those corners. And I kind of like that flow we've got. And I love how I can see little bits of the textured uh, charcoal just peeping through the in through those washes, which is absolutely lovely. So, yes, let's let this one completely dry. So as you can see, this is nice and dry now. And look at that lovely texture. We haven't used any granulation fluid. We've not used any salt or cling film, just charcoal, who knew? <laughs> but I really do like that. And I think to finish it off, let's put some shadows in there. And remember, we're not creating a masterpiece. We're enjoying ourselves. We're having a bit of fun. <laughs> Don't put pressure on yourself. Let's take our blue. Let's take the ultramarine blue. Let a little bit of red flow into it. It wanted to anyway. Did you see that? It just wanted to float in there. So let's let it do that. Okay, so big one in the middle, casting a shadow. Let's put that in. So let's put a lovely blue wash across. Oh, like that look. So that shape. Soften the edge a little bit with some water. And then I'm going to take that blue. It's now turning into purple because there's too much red going in there. And let's connect that shape, just like we did with the charcoal, but I'm putting the blue in now. Let me just get a fresher wash of that. Lots of water on my brush, just allowing that to flow. Maybe a few little taps as well might be quite nice. Shall we do another one? Let's make the bottom half of this one darker. So it's just the blue. Cleaning my brush and just softening it off so I don't have a hard line. Let's pull that out from that shape. But I keep cleaning my brush, have you noticed? Because I want to try and keep those washes fresh. And, you know, it is picking up a little bit of the charcoal and that will make the washes a little bit dirty. I think we can forgive it. And finally, this one here, let's put a bit of a shadow there, look. With the blue. Maybe a little bit more. Just soften that with my brush and then just take the blue and let's pull it. Let's pull in the shadow from this. Look, let's put that little stalk in there. Look, they're quite nice. 
and I can still see those lovely textures underneath the uh, charcoal, which is nice. Let's take that around. Let it meet that shadow as well. It's looking rather dramatic, that, isn't it? <laughs> I think I'm going to stop at that point. Uh, I'm kind of liking where it's going. And, you know, have a play around, really. It may be for you. It may not be for you. Uh, but I, I like it. And I can see lots of possibilities for future paintings. And So this is a kind of warm-up just to get you in the zone just to let you know exactly how the charcoal and watercolour are going to react with one another and of course when you see washes like that you know that the possibilities are going to be endless <laughs> right I've enjoyed showing that to you I hope you do have a go let me know how you go on thank you for watching and I'll see you next time take care